All right, can they win on their patch? The Rejects playing up against Neat. Neat trying to play spoiler here. It is the Rejects who are trying to get that spot all the way to BlizzCon. So Nick playing Subtlety Rogue, so they're going to be playing his Balanced Druid Rogue, similarly to how a Mage and a Rogue would play with Setup Burst. They can use the Solar Beam, which is that yellow box underneath Tiber's health. That's a Silence effect, so they want to use that on Rub Cub. And then Nick wants to stun multiple targets and then pick a Burst. They could go after Jamili or Roasties with that, and they're going to be playing around Setup rather than Sustain Damage, as you would see if Nick was playing a spec like Assassination. Yeah, and obviously the other benefit of the Subtlety Rogue is that he just has a lot more ways of landing those stuns, which can also be used in a defensive capacity. We know that Restoration Shamans have a fantastic kind of mana pool going into that late game, so we could also see them play a slightly slower pace game here, as Roosty is obviously going to be opening up onto Tiber. The full Polymorph is landed, but they're swapping it over onto Nick. This is a good opener from the Rejects so far. Ooh, that Meteor could hit huge for Jamili. Nick bursts down. Korlek actually trinket it. Jamili on the back foot a bit here. Tiber dishing out tons of counter pressure with this incarnation. Then switching to Roasties, bursting him down. Rubcub has to trade out Sacrifice. Both teams come out swinging with tons of pressure. Nice Cyclone by Tiber. Roasties held it and paused at low health. Rubcub playing the Avenging Crusader. He's loved that talent. And even in Legion, he was kind of leading the charge for Paladins, that aggressive healing talent. But he gets punished on it. Triple crowd control from Neat. These are the underdogs. These are the newcomers. And they're really starting to put it to the rejects. Yeah. It you need to really respect the incarnation from the Moonkin, one of the most def offensive cooldowns as we see the smoke bomb coming down from Roasties, forcing out a lot of defensives on Nick, actually. That was the Trinket, the Cloak, and the Evasion. They're still going through it. No Trinket on the healer. If they can follow up this crowd control chain with the DR Ring of Frost, this could be the kill. Faint used. Nick should be able to walk out of this one, I feel like, but that was the very last cooldowns from Neat. They should be able to get the Spirit Link out if they need to. Ascendance trade out instead, but the win condition for Rejects is that next crowd control chain. No Trinkets on either player. Nick will go down in the next setup set. All right, let's see how Nick is going to survive in this scenario. We've seen a lot of rogues make quick getaways and close calls, but I'm not sure if this is going to be the same against a team like the Rejects, such a high caliber team. Triple crowd control, perfect execution, too much damage to handle, and the Rejects are not going to allow the underdogs to sneak away with game number one. And you know, this is kind of what you should expect typically of the team that does have the upper hand, right? And, and that not going to be the main focus of the pressure. And then he gets to do the damage as well in those setups. So this is where Jamili looks really scary. You want to keep your eyes on him because the rejects can get on match point right here and right now. Tiber boldly starting the fight out of stealth. That means Roasties can get a sneak attack on multiple players. They Chief Shot Korlik. Jamili's in position to poly. Nick tries to deny it with Shadow Step Chief Shot, but without Shadow Step to reconnect, he's going to be a bit more immobile. He goes for a play, stunning up Rub Cub. Tiber now out of that stun. Can follow up this Kidney Shot with the Solar Beam combo. He, Roasties gets stunned on his Trinket, but with Cloak of Shadows, he should be able to survive. This is a clean exchange for Neat early on, pulling vital defensive cooldowns from Roasties. If they can stay alive for another three more attempts like that, they can easily close this game out. Now they're on the back foot looking to survive. Tiber line of sighting, but Nick gets swapped to by Roasties, looking to punish and go after him. Korlik is the one that kind of has to carry his team. He has to predict crowd control, use Grounding Totem to eat it up and soak it, or preemptively Earthen Wall Totem. In the first game, he panic trinketed. He didn't make any preemptive plays. This is a nice punish on the trinket here of Korlik, Hammer of Justice, but Jamili gets denied on the poly. Great peels by Nick. Almost a classic Neilio triple cheap shot play there by Nick, trying to showcase some high level play here. Preemptively Cloak of Shadows. Korlik preemptively Earthen Walled, so Korlik is starting to show that he's predicting crowd control and starting to soak up some damage. He's got to be careful. They're making a swap to him. Meteor comes crashing in. Half his health gone in an instant. He's likely to survive, though, with Astral Shift popped. Tiber might need to look to try and Cyclone DPS here. He's just playing it passive. Yeah, I, I like what the Rejects are doing. They recognize that Nick got the preemptive Cloak of Shadows out, so they swap it over to Korlek. He actually doesn't Ooh. have any major defensive cooldowns right now, as we see a little swap over onto Roasties. That actually forces the Divine Shield, that massive defensive cooldown from Rub Cub there on the Holy Paladin, but they're looking to set up onto Nick. He uses his Trinket early, though. Should be able to survive that one. An excellent Cyclone coming in from Tiber, denying the crowd control, and now it's Neat that have the edge because there's no breakers on Rub Cub. Yeah, this is looking better and better for Neat. They've survived those burst windows. They've got Solar Beam ready. Kidney shot, cheap shot. Roasties, this could just be the game. Korlek Beautiful preemptively length. spirit links. They know they've got the win in the bag here. Roasties is so greedy in that position, choosing not to trinket. And now he could just throw the game as a result of that. He's desperately trying to stay alive. Nice shadow step kick to interrupt the follow-up crowd control on Rub Cub. That allows him to connect a powerful defensive and stay alive. That was a greedy decision by Roasties, but because he was able to survive, it does put his team ahead. 
Yeah, I mean, the only reason he actually survived that is because Rob Cobb's playing the Dwarf and he was able to use that racial to break the root beam and get the sacrifice out in the final slivers of Roasty's health. If not for that, Roasty's would be dead right now and he might still die. We see the full kidney shot into the full cyclone. Roasty's Whoa. not using his trinket because it was off cooldown for a second. Cloak of Shadows comes out though and they have the full polymorph over onto Kolik. They're looking for the kill on Nick. Can they follow up the crowd control, Said Both rogues in a lot of trouble at this point, but I would say that Korlik's team is slightly ahead with his trinket rotating up in two more seconds to get out of that deadly blind. Tiber's got Incarn in 26 seconds. He's waiting for that moment of opportunity to burst down Roasties. It's a battle to the finish at this point. We're not even into dampening, but this game could end in the next setup. corlix has got that Earth Elemental, so he can get combat when he's blinded. Bops the Trinket anyway. We see Kidney Shot on Roasties, Cheap Shot on Rub Cub. Good crowd control executed here by Team Neat. They managed to pull both Trinkets by Rub Cub and Roasties. A critical error on their part. That's a massive opening. They're trying to get a kill before, though, with both healers in crowd control. Both teams in trouble. Tiber gets swapped to, but Korlik read the play. He's got Earthen Wall down before the crowd control landed. Korlik finally showed some signs of life here, predicting that crowd control. Now Roasty's on the back foot, on the run, ducking for cover. Rub Cub gets the sacrifice off one second before that kidney shot. Both Rub Cub and Korlik playing out of their minds, predicting crowd control at every last second. Yeah, Nick had a fantastic setup there as well. That was the ice block coming in from Jamilian. Nick got the step kick, denying the setup. Now we see the smoke bomb though. Tiber still in trouble, caught up in that bear form. Even with the incarnation, he's not going to get any damage out right now because he's playing so defensively. We see renewal from him, stabilizing his health though. All three Trinkets down on Nick, or on Neat rather, meaning that Rejects will win with this next setup. And I mean, since Roasties is caught up panel, they have to get the kill here. Looks like he should be able to survive. Blessing protection from Rub Cub, denying the crowd control, getting the heals. Now the full counts, but over onto Colic. If they can get the Hammer of Justice or the Polymorph off, the cycle will win the game. Cyclone on Rub Cub. Roasties in trouble. He's kidney shots Nick. Jamili trying to sneak in a Polymorph. He doesn't ground into him. A mistake by Korlik is likely to cost his team the match. Nick is hanging on by a thread with evasion. Good peels by Tiber. Nice kicked by Nick to compensate, but Korlik cannot afford to leave himself open to polymorphs like that again. Yeah, he was very close to the pillar there, actually. I'm not sure how Jimmy Lee was able to squeeze that one in, but good job by him as we see the rope beam coming over. Oh, bomb. Big damage from Roasties. He's going to fall down here. He does end up falling. A very back and forth game, though, from both sides. Neat pull it out on Ruins of Lordaeron. Definitely a very back and forth series. We see signs of life from both squads. And honestly, all I can say after. Strong is your weakest link. And right now, the rejects, they're leaving holes in their game plan aggressively. And then on the side of Neat, their weakest link right now is Korlik mistiming these grounding totems and allowing Jamili to get polymorphs that he otherwise should not be able to get. So if Korlik cleans up that defense and the rejects clean up their offense, this could be the most insane game we've ever seen. Yeah, individually, the rejects are looking pretty good. Jamili's landing some phenomenal polymorphs. Rob Cub obviously amazing, as we saw Roasty's actually getting caught out in the sap there, having to trade out his trinket, Cloak of Shadows. And Roasty's has been the person who I've not been very happy with. He's been DRing his stuns quite often in the last game. There, he got caught out once again. He uses the blind, achieves absolutely nothing with it, because once again, Sid, they're not on the same page. Yeah, and they got Roasty's trinket. Nick has smoke bomb. He's gonna cheap shot Roasties, there's a smoke bomb. Rub Cub gets cycloned, even just a two second cyclone could cost him the game. Not enough damage to find a kill, unfortunately for Team Neat. That was a great setup, they pull more trinkets from the team. Neat have all the momentum, they've held on to a lot of defense. Korlik's got that grounding totem down. He needs to duck for cover and avoid poly, but now Roasties goes for the punish on Nick, kidney shotting him, but Nick has trinket, he gets out. Roasties is still low, Rub Cub is silenced up. He gets out of that at the final seconds. Roasties being greedy, not evasion, he gets cloned at low health, but Nick is still in trouble. He evasions to try and avoid the avenging Crusader, but he's not facing the target. Rub Cub's hitting him on his back. That's a huge mistake by Nick. He's going to take a lot of free damage there that Korlik now has to deal with. Yeah, and because of that, Korlik had to trade out his trinket, and suddenly the pressure reverses. Now the rejects have a fantastic opening. There's no trinket on Nick, no trinket on Korlik. The next Hodge or Dragon's Breath, however they can set it up, could be the kill if they can just land that cleanly. Meanwhile, Neat obviously going to go for their setup, but Rub Cup has the Divine Shield. He trades it out. He knows this is the kill. Here comes the Hammer of Justice, Sid. Nick pre-faints. So that reduces a lot of damage on himself, and Roasty's got Cyclone. So good teamwork between Nick and Tiber, but if Korlik keeps getting crowd control, they have to deny it. Nick with a Shadow Step kick breaks up the chain. Korlik can now recover. Good teamwork by Neat there. That was a huge win condition for the Rejects. They get completely denied. Now Neat have an opportunity to try and gun down Roasties, but if they overextend in line of sight, Roasties has got Vendetta to punch back. It's still anyone's game, Adrian. Yeah, I mean, neither of these teams have many cooldowns. We see the full kidney shot. Just need one crowd control over onto Korlik. Unable to land it so far. Irvin Shield Totem coming down means that he should be able to survive, and uh, that, was a, that was a great opportunity from the Rejects, but now that they've kind of used 
that it's going to be a little bit harder for them. They still have no trinkets on need, so really the rejects could win any moment if they do land the crowd control over onto the shaman. But I think one of the main things they learned from the last setup is they need to get the counter spell over onto Tiber, otherwise he'll peel with the cyclone. Blind, no trinket, devastating time here for Nick. He's retreating away. He actually vanished in stealth. He's invisible. Perfect stealth timing there. Rosties doesn't get a sap. They need a polymorph, but Nick interrupts it. MVP, wow. MVP plays by Nick in this game right there. That could have been the end of the match, but he just read the situation perfectly, predicted it, and outplayed them. Nicely done by Neat, the underdogs, but Jamili sneaks a polymorph. These are the polymorphs that they can't allow to happen. It could just close the game out. Tiber's trying to carry with some cyclones, but not able to find it. Nick's still in trouble, hanging on by a thread with Cloak of Shadows at 30%. Korlik is still locked down by Jamili. Roasties gets stunned up, trying to reverse impression, not able to find it. Korlik grounding totems, tried to avoid the Hammer of Justice. I'm not sure if Rub Cub committed it, but it looks like Nick is going to recover. Both sides start to take a chill pill, but I would say that Neat are slightly ahead on cooldowns, having trinkets available on multiple members. Yeah, that was another huge play coming out of Nick there in that one. Managed to run circles around Roasties, basically, and get away from the setup. Now we can see Neat pushing in, trying to get their own root beam set up. That's going to be Rub Cub's Dwarf Racial to break out of that root, enabling him, but he gets caught up oh! in the cyclone on his trinket. A nice shadow step from Roasties, playing behind the pillar, but if they can chain this crowd control, Roasties doesn't have anything. He's oh. just going to fall oh. here. And Neat with some huge outplays, able to take the swing match on game three. All right, Nick. Nick, we <laughs> see. <laughs> All right. All right. Here on Tolveron Arena, they're about as rejected as they can get, and I don't expect to see them at BlizzCon. It can end here. No one's going to be building a pyramid for the rejects if they lose on Tolveron as they sink beneath the sands. Neat, we were counting them out. We were counting them out, but they came to play. There's really only some small mistakes on their part, whereas the rejects are starting to make massive mistakes, and Nick is covering the mistakes of Korlek, and that's the sign of a rank one top level player is when you can set up your own plays and also cover the mistakes of your team. And that kind of player is a BlizzCon champion. And this team has been a slow burn through Legion on the ladder. That was average tournament performances over a long period of time, but now Neat are coming into form. They've got good crowd control and burst early on. They pull Cloak of Shadows from Roasties. A decent start for Neat here on match point. Yeah, and of course, bringing in Greki on the Restoration Druid changes up the entire game plan for Rejects. Now they do have the potential to survive a lot more of the setups from Need. Obviously, the Restoration Druid Hot going to enable them to survive a lot of those Subtlety Rogue uh, burst opportunities because Subtlety Rogues don't do so much damage, and the mana will be better going into the long game. So they're basically saying, hey, we're not confident in our offensive setups or uh, goes as they're otherwise referred to. We need to play this longer game, and Greki will help them do that. So. All right, we see crowd control initiated on the three members by Need. They're going after Rogue. Roasties. These hexes on Jamili have been so great, but now, why is Greki not dispelling that? That took a long time for Greki to dispel that. He's got to make sure he's awake here. This is match point. He can't afford any mistakes. Nick gets caught in a smoke bomb with no... Uh, he triggers out. Korlek's trying to get in line sight, but he gets vortexed out of range by Greki. Nick survives with nice cyclones on Roasties. Good teamwork by Neat, but Korlek gets caught in a polymorph in midfield. The positioning from Korlek is very bad on this map. It is unfortunately one of the largest in the pool, but I would like to see Korlek clean this up, maybe pull back, try and go to more more of a neutral position. Looks like they're trying to switch targets, go after Jamili. They managed to pull Iron Bark. Now they can switch back to Roasties and that defense won't be available. Yeah, and we can see all three of the trinkets have actually been forced out on Neat. And there's once again this kind of 50 second window where the rejects can push for crowd oh. control. We see Greki going across the map. Here comes the Mighty Bash. They might try and set something up onto Nick here, but I'm not sure if Roosties has his kidney shot available. He used it on Tiber just a short moment ago. If they can follow up the crowd control, maybe they can tunnel him down a little bit. Bark Skin comes out as the defensive cooldown for the Moonkin Druid, reducing that incoming damage. Jamili on this Frost Mage just trying to play the slow game here. You can see he's using a lot of his mobility to kind of kite Nick, but Roasties is the target of choice. Smoke Bomb available. Nick not pulling the trigger on that, trying to maybe bait a trinket there. Greki's actually pretty incredibly far behind on mana. If they're playing the slow long game, it's not looking good for them. Right now, they don't have Smoke Bomb. They don't really have any opportunities. Korlek's got Trinket coming up soon. It's looking better and better for Neat, but they need to deny Gorecki from drinking. So he sneaks behind the pillar. He's in stealth and drinking. This regenerates his mana, but gets denied by Tiber, saving that astral power to use Starfall. It's an area effect. It can go around the corner on the pillars and deny drinks. Really nice level decision there by Tiber. He catches Gorecki midfield in a bash. 
Looks like he's tr maybe trying to get a Cyclone. Roasty should be able to deny it, so they go for Blind instead. That pulls Trinket. They sap his Trinket! Nick is a legend! Yeah, a huge outplay there coming in from Nick. The sap on the Trinket from Greki. Normally he needs to for a second. Here comes the Smoke Bomb. That oh. the Ice Block as well. Big plays, but they're trying to counter go. Full Sheep over onto Colic. Here comes the Icy Veins. That huge Frost Mage burst from Jamili, of course. We'll be playing that Frigid Winds. But he's just getting shut down. The defensive Smoke Bomb as they try to get the swap. That's going to be the Spirit Link for from Colic. Big cooldowns on either side. Honestly, though, this is in favor of the Rejects because I think they have the only real kill windows going early into the game. That Spearling Totem was a bit of a panic move, but they've still got momentum. Jamili's on Hypo, gets cloned at low health. He can't Ice Block when he's on Hypothermia, and it's a debuff that lasts a couple of seconds longer. He needs to avoid damage. He's line of siding with Gareki, trying to pick him back up, but really starting to struggle. Tyver's got Incarn. There's a kidney shot. Jamili could be alone. Nick looking to close. Shadow Step kicks the poly. He can't blink away. Cheap shot Shadow Blades, huge damage for Jamili. This could easily be the second ice block if he's not careful. Second ice block, knee come out swinging. This is match point. BlizzCon is on the line for the rejects. They can't afford to lose. Yep, Jamili quaking in his ice block. He's as cold as ice right now, but he's going to have to come out momentarily as Nick is just tunneling him down. 100% uptime against this Frost Mage is not something you want to see. You need to start getting those snares, getting those roots, denying Nick his damage. The miss on the cone of cold there oh, is nice going to enable Nick to get out as we see the solo being fake. Just a good call. Uh, by Gorecki, and now you can see Jamili and Gorecki kind of pulling back into this defensive position. They know they're low on defensive cooldowns. Ironbark's forced. Mana's not looking great either as we swap. swap over to Roasties. All right, I pull this trinket. They've still got momentum. Tiber clones him at low health. Gorecki's panicking. He's sweating. He's running low on mana. He was expecting this to be a slow, long, dampening game, but Neat are bringing it to him and putting the pressure on. Gorecki's forced to play aggressive. He secures a cycle, and they manage to pull Nick's trinket. They can punish that with Smoke Bomb moving forward, but Jamili has to make Make it to that point. He's under fire. Trades up 10 shield to recover. Gorecki repositioning. His man is not looking too good. He needs to try and go for a drink, but if they keep saving Starfall to deny it, he won't be able to find it. Tranquility. Blind. Pull trinkets. They go after Roasties. Maybe Jamili for a swap instead. They've got both of his ice blocks out of the way. At this point, it's anyone's match, but it's looking worse and worse for the rejects. This is unbelievable, Adrian. If they can pull Roasties away, you see there's a bit of a gap between the smoke bomb on Nick up in about 45 seconds and the trinket on Roasties in about a minute 15. So all they really need to do is keep rejects playing defensively. Gorecki will be looking for a drink, which means he will be playing far back and away from Roasties. This smoke bomb in about 30 seconds time could be the win condition for Neat, but they need to keep Greki from drinking. In the meanwhile, we see another kidney shot going to force out as the bash comes in. They might just get the kill really? anyways. No triggers available. DR cheap shot coming up from the subtlety rogue. Those spam stuns, but it's the step restun. They go for the counter kill. Here comes the smoke bomb for Roasties. Nick in trouble. Three evasions might be able to survive this one. Triple DR cheap shot and the nice. full sheet from Jamili as they're trying to stay in the game. Trying to stay in the BlizzCon run here, said. Both rogues still in so much trouble. He closed him at low health on the iron bark. Amazing play by Neat. They're completely on the ropes. The rejects don't have anything left. Bomb. Gorecki's tapped up mana. Smoke bomb gets dropped. Oh, oh, the rejects are going home. Okay, so oh, I, 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 I actually I actually did the math. We got confirmation. So what happens now, the super rejects feed versus the fake zebras. We're all tied up. One and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament? Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in battle for Azeroth.